Women are rallying to the flag. Here at a naval port somewhere in England, Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Kent greets officers of the Women's Royal Naval Service before watching a march past in which the girls prove themselves worthy of their brothers in arms. The Princess Royal has appealed for more recruits to join the thousands already in the auxiliary territorial service. It certainly seems a grand way for girls to do their bit by taking on jobs which would otherwise keep fighting men tied to desks and benches. Knowledge is improved by lectures on how to do this or that, while care of the kit soon makes the girls wonder who straightened up their rooms at home. The canteens are jolly places where one can buy many things which would seem strange in a men's canteen. Taking them all round, you must admit that the ATS <laughs> look pretty good. From overseas, the story is much the same. Women are relieving men for the fighting forces in South Africa too. In the true tradition of the services, girls of the Women's Auxiliary Air Force make a grand show at the presentation of colors to their unit. First, the dear old Union Jack, emblem of all we hold dear, of all the British Empire is fighting for. Then the flag of the Union, no less a matter of pride. And are they proud? Just sit back and watch. The girls' smartness on the parade ground is equaled only by their industry in the workshops and their general keenness. Throughout the empire, women are proving that they can carry on men's jobs. Their mascot is as proud as the next one and keeps pace with the girls who have fallen into step with their brothers in the great march for freedom. There's little more a mere man can say except, well done girls, keep up the good work. <laughs> <laughs>